Greetings and welcome to the short video presentation where we look at how we go about installing Nessus using the Docker program. In this lab we will install the Docker program onto our Kali machine. Once that has been completed, you will move on to the second part of the lab and download and install the Docker container for Nessus. Using Docker, we will be able to install Nessus and all of its dependencies without having to call on or use any dependencies on our Kali machine. For this lab, you'll need a currently updated and upgraded installation of your Kali Linux and a good internet connection. Once the update and the upgrade of your Kali Linux has completed, you want to go ahead and make a snapshot. To do that, I'm going to go up to the taskbar. I'm going to click on machine. I'm going to scroll down to where it says take snapshot. I'm going to give it a user-friendly name. In this case, I called mine no docker install. I went ahead and I saved that snapshot. My machine restarted and now I'm back up. We're now ready to move on with the actual installation of the Docker program. Now to do this, we're going to build an automated script. The automated script is going to do all the heavy lifting for us and all we have to do is run that script and we can sit back and wait till it gets done and our Docker program will be installed. The script that we need to use to install the Docker program can be found on the internet up on GitHub and it can also be found inside of the lab. I'm going to go ahead and take this URL on out to GitHub so we can see the actual script. Now this is the actual script and if I go over here to the right and I click on raw you'll see that I get everything that I need and now if I select the entire text it's like this and I can right click and I can go ahead and just select copy like so. I can close this out and now I can open up my terminal and we're going to open up nano and we're going to create a bash script. This is going to help us build the script as quickly and as easily as possible. Now you're free to use any text editor you want. Again, I'm using nano. Up inside my Kali terminal, I have typed in nano space docker underscore install dot sh. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And you'll notice I now have a clean text file. I'm going to right click and I'm just going to paste the contents of that script that I downloaded from the internet. And again, you can find the same script up inside of the lab file and it's inside of a box and all you have to do is copy and paste the contents that's in the lab and you can do the same thing without having to go to the internet. Now I'm currently logged on as root so when I save this file it's going to go to my home directory for root and that's where we're going to find it when we get ready to run it. So let's just go ahead and do the control X. It's going to ask me do I want to save the changes that are up inside of the buffer. I'm going to type in Y for yes and I'm going to hit enter and we're back to our prompt. To see the location of this script that we just created, I'm going to type in ls at my prompt. And that's going to show us everything that we currently have installed inside of my home directory as root. And you'll see that I do have a docker underscore install.sh file present. We're now going to create a executable using that docker underscore install.sh file that we just created. To do this, we're going to use the change mod command. So at my terminal prompt, I've typed in chmod space, the plus sign, small letter x space, the name of the file that I want to make executable. In this case, it's the docker underscore install dot sh file. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And now if I do another ls, you'll notice that the docker underscore install dot sh file has changed its color from white to green. This means that the file is now an executable. I've gone ahead and cleared my terminal, and now we're ready to begin the actual installation of the Docker program using our newly created script. To do this, I'm going to type in sh space docker underscore install dot sh, and I'm going to hit enter. It's important that we do not interrupt this installation process and let it complete, and when it's done, it'll come back to the Kali prompt. Once the Docker program has completed its installation, you will get the hello docker welcome message. This hello docker command can also be launched from the command line if you want to check the status of your docker program. 
to help demonstrate how we go about checking to see if Docker is properly installed and if it's working, we can use the Docker space run space hello dash world command. I've gone ahead and typed this into my Kali terminal. I hit enter and it comes back letting me know that my current installation of Docker is installed and working correctly. We're now ready to pull down the Nessus container that we need from the Docker site. I'm going to right click inside my terminal and I'm going to paste in the following command docker space pull and I want it to pull down the container called fizzymat forward slash nessus dash seven dash ubuntu. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and you'll see that it pulls down the container without any issues. Now that we have the container for Nessus downloaded, we need to run it to create an image. The image will run inside of its own container inside of the Docker program. So I copy and paste in the following command, docker space run space dash d space dash dash name space nessus dash seven dash Ubuntu. Now that is going to be the name of the container or the image in this case that's going to be running inside of the container inside of Docker. Now we can follow that up with the dash P which stands for port and we're going to tell Docker that this container needs to have access to port 8834. We follow that up with the name of the image we downloaded from the Docker site. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And we see that we have a container now that will run the image for Nessus up inside of Docker. To see what images are currently available up inside of my Docker program, I can type in docker space ps space dash small letter a. And regardless of their state, we'll be able to see whether or not the image is present. And now we can see that we have Nessus currently installed as an image up inside of Docker running in a container. Now once I have the image running, as we do now, I can then go into the web page of Nessus and begin the registration process. And that's what we're going to talk about next. As soon as we launch Nessus, we're going to be prompted for creating a user account, which we'll do. And we're also going to be prompted for the registration key or the activation code. So we need to go out to the Tenable site and we need to register for that activation code. So what I've done is I've gone into Google and I've just typed in register Nessus. I'm going to go down here where it says obtain an activation code takes me over to the next page. Now here we have two different versions of Nessus. There's the free version and then there's the pro version. The free version only allows you to scan 16 IPs at a time, which is way more than enough for what we're doing here. And the updates only happen once every seven days, whereas with the pro version you can scan unlimited IPs and you can get your updates for your plugins daily if you so desire. Next, we click on the Register Now button, and we're taken over to the Register page where we only have to put in a small amount of information. Your first name, your last name, and then an email address. Now, if you have problems with your email address, and some users will, depending on where their ISP is located and or the type of email they're using, they can have an issue where they will not get a key. If that happens, just go up to Google, Create yourself a new email account and create something that resembles a business address. doesn't make any difference what it is. So for my registration, I used this address right here, information at cyberoffense.com. I'm going to go back out to my email and I'm going to get this activation key. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm now up inside of the inbox for my email and there's the activation key waiting for me. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And we're going to see that if we scroll down a little bit, we get the activation key. We're going to go ahead and copy that. And let's go back over to our Nessus. And now we're going to open up our browser. So I've got Firefox inside of Kali opened up. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to put in the URL for the web interface for my Nessus. So I'm going to use localhost colon 8834. Now notice that this is a secure site, so you've got to include HTTPS. Now let's see what happens. So now it says that my connection is not secure. 
that would be normal because it doesn't understand the certificate and it doesn't recognize who created the certificate. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the advanced button. And down here, I'm going to add an exception. And I'm going to say confirm the security exception. And there we go. Now we have to create the account. I'm just going to type in root. And for the password, I'm going to type in Tor. Keep things simple. And now once the activation code that I received from Tenable, I'm going to go ahead and right click and paste that in there. I'm going to say continue. Now it's going to begin the updating of the plugins and the signature files that it needs. So this is going to take a while. So <laughs> be patient with it. If you got a slow connection, I mean it can take a while. If you got a good connection, it won't take you very long. But if you're on a dial up or you got five megabytes of bandwidth, be patient. So while Nessus is downloading its plugins, I'm going to go ahead and prepare for my next video, which is conducting a Nessus scan on your network. And after about an hour, I have my Nessus configured. It has downloaded all of its plugins, and we are given the management page for conducting a Nessus scan. So before we get out of here, I just want to go ahead and show you how to restart an image. And we're going to restart our Nessus image after we've rebooted, we've come back up, and we want to get back into that same Nessus image to continue on with our scanning. I'm going to show you how we do that next. So I'm now going to go ahead and close out the web interface for Nessus. Once the web interface closes out, I'm going to just type in reboot and hit enter. And in just a moment, my Cali is going to reboot, come back up, and then we'll see how we go about going back into it and restarting our Nessus image. So my Kali machine has rebooted. I'm back to the desktop. I've opened up a clean terminal, and I now need to see what images are currently present inside of Docker. So I'm going to type in Docker space PS space dash small letter A, and now I'm going to hit enter. And in just a moment, it's going to show me all of the images I currently have available and what their container IDs are. So I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen. And I need to restart Nessus. You can see that it's been exited. So I need to go ahead and grab this container ID over here, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And now I'm going to bring up a command. And you can see that the container ID is in there. But I'm going to go ahead and repaste it back in there so you can see what I'm doing. So I have docker space start space dash dash attach space the container ID. Now, this restarting of a container or an image inside of Docker can be used for any image that is present. If I need to restart another container, I don't have to rebuild it. I can just restart it. Now, this keeps the number of containers to a minimum. Because if I don't do this, just like images for VirtualBox or VMware, they can become out of control. So I want to keep my images inside of Docker to the bare minimum so I don't run out of space and resources. So now we're ready to restart. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And in just a moment, you'll see that it's starting Nessus. I'm pretty sure Nessus has restarted, so I'm going to go ahead and close this prompt. And I'm going to open up a new one. Again, I'm going to do the PS command to see exactly what images are currently running. And the status for my Nessus image has been updated, and it shows that it is up, and it has been up for approximately one minute. So in this short video presentation, uh, we got to see how we go about downloading, bringing in a container off of the Docker repository site, and then creating an image by running that container up inside of Docker. We also got to see how we go about restarting Docker once we closed out our Nessus or we've closed out Kali and we've come back into it. And that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about creating a install of Nessus using Docker. Now if you have any questions or you have any concerns about any of the material covered in this video or in the lab file, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor and I'll see you in my next video.